Hey guys, welcome back to the show. We're back in in-depth uh, news, and this time we're with Stephen Lloyd from Chroma Cameras, who's just basically announced a couple cameras to be in the market that were gonna be announced at the photography show that got canceled. And uh, he's already had the Chroma camera come out in uh, Kickstarter, but today they basically he's basically announced two different cameras. We're gonna be talking about materials, doubts, uh, what their cameras can do, what they might not be able to do, and all the choices and stuff. So Stephen, uh, welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me. Um, okay, so let, uh, let us know just quickly, what is that you've been doing lately? Lately? Um, I mean, okay, of... chroma cameras. Let's give it like a minute <laughs> of chroma cameras. Okay, um, chroma cameras started as a bit of a, I, was, I wouldn't say I was dead into it, but I was asked to design uh, a large format camera from scratch. I'd spent a few years before that making one-off cameras for myself, for other people. Um, sort of customs, I've done Polaroid 110, large format conversions, 35 mil, things like that, bit of everything. Um, and I was asked to design it when I was in a pub, which is always dangerous. I tend to go along with ideas there. Mm -hmm. um, started drawing it up in September 2016. The first ideas kind of, I was, I was at a, a film photography meet. So we were talking about it there and, and kind of want to get an idea. Uh, I kind of run with it. If I, you know, it's one of those things that I need to get it down on, well, on screen, then I, I sort of all can designed. So early design was, was quite basic. It was quite a simple design, um, very sort of traditional standards. Um, standard materials, a friend of mine runs a laser cutting company. So mm -hmm. I was able to use his lasers to kind of dev the early build. I was kind of early in, in, in wood as a, as a, a kind of a, a cheaper way to, to dev. And then I, I wanted to make uh, make the camera something new, something unique. So that's where the, the acrylic material came in. Mm -hmm. uh, acrylic's great because it comes in a whole range of colors, um, thicknesses, uh, and if it's laminated, it's it's as solid as as wood, really, or as as any other design. So that the early design of the the Chroma was launched in 2017 on Kickstarter, uh, went really well. So they they were sort of all all sold quickly. I think I'd reached my funding target in about six hours. So that kind of kick-started me on, on the route of Chroma. I was still working full-time on a, on a, I used to work in IT. So, uh, and then I've kind of developed from there really. So I've, I'm now where I am today. I'm, I'm full-time Chroma. This is my, my business now. And I'd say I'm launching two new camera models uh, this weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I remember seeing the, the the development of the Chroma camera, the Kickstarter, the project with the acrylic. Um, first thing I'm going to ask because it's I'm very curious is the choice of acrylic. I understand the differences maybe mm -hmm. aesthetically, but like how's the aging of acrylic? Like large format cameras have developed a history. I mean, we're talking about cameras that have been around for over a hundred years, and people are still yeah. shooting over a hundred year cameras, and those materials they chose a hundred years ago are still sort of yep. okay ish. Of course, you need yeah. to do a little bit of tender care. Um, but like acrylic, is it going to have like a longevity on on users? I mean, I'm thinking of acrylic as in I'm a 1980s kid. So I remember plastics then and I see plastics now from then. And it's like they just like, you know, they, they disappear yeah. in your hands. It's quite brittle and, and didn't age particularly mm -hmm. well. Uh, mm -hmm. modern, modern acrylic or Perspex um, is much more hard wearing. Uh, as an idea, we we had um, tortoises in our garden, so they had an acrylic house. So it was out throughout the year, and it's out you know, four years out in the, the wind, rain, snow, nice yeah. British weather. It, it looks as it did the day put it out there. So it's it's very robust, and, and the key with acrylic is how it's assembled. So mm -hmm. all of the, the components that require to the bed, uh, for example, is, is laminated out of um, four layers of acrylic of varying thicknesses so mm -hmm. they're all bolted and bonded together so in itself it doesn't move um, and okay. it, it's very solid um, okay. coupled with that I also uh, have 3D printed main um, components so the rear body the film back the front body and the uprights are all printed parts so they're um, solid they, they don't flex they don't give but they're also light yeah, yeah, lightweight, I think, is important. I mean, people are shifting between either field cameras and studio cameras as monorails. Yeah. And yeah. monorails, being a user, is not something you want to carry to the field unless you really need it. 
<clears throat> and I think the lightness is important, but the sturdiness is too. Like the whole exactly. idea of these bellows that you basically, you know, it's it's like a kite. Like if you put it up and it's yeah. just wobbling, uh, there's so much you can do. I did notice that you had a limitation in uh, bellows on the new camera, and we'll talk more about it. But like, the, like what's the limitation on lenses on the Chroma Advance? Uh, for anyone watching, yeah. Chroma Advance is the first model, which is on your store now. And it was probably the Kickstarter camera, if I'm not wrong. Um, yeah. What's the limitation? What's the bellows that you can do? Like, what lenses could you use? Um, standard draw using um, flat lens boards. Without a recessed lens board, mm -hmm. you can go down to about 65 mil as a yeah. wide angle, which is probably the kind of widest angle most people would use, yeah. uh, up to um, just under 300 mil. Okay. So yeah, close by. Direct. I mean, it's pretty close to what Intrepid offers, yeah. I think, is pretty much. I have an Intrepid Mark III, if I'm not wrong, over there on the shelf. And yeah, 300 you can't do, but you can do like a 240 for portraits sometimes. Yeah. You yeah. can do 210 and then 65 for people that are watching, maybe you're not large format users. 65 millimeter lenses usually don't cover a lot. So the most you can usually want is a little bit of tilt, yeah. a slight shift, but like two millimeters one way and that's yeah. about it unless you're using a roll film back and that's a totally different story. Um, okay, so this is the camera you started with. I see it's 350 pounds without any, you know, let's yep. talk about normal retail. I know there's a, a special yeah. offer this weekend, but you know, I don't know when people will watch. So 350 pounds, uh, it's uh, the lens, uh, the bellows are not interchangeable in this model? No, they are. They're, oh, they're they are. Well, same yeah, as the new, new camera. Yes, so they, okay. they both use the same magnetic. <laughs> Um, fixings. I, I did standardize that across both models. Okay. Well, that's very good because I am one of the things I complain about with, you know, and not to bring again the uh, Intrepid, but is the fact that you can't change the bellows. Like yeah. I have a Chamonix camera, you can change the bellows. It's amazing. I actually saw your back bellows look really good and they're 40 pounds only. So congratulations on that pricing. I think it's, I mean, it's more, I think it's cheaper than the shipping for most other brands only. So <laughs> that's pretty good. And back bellows really helps you use that, you know, 90 millimeter lens with movements or an architecture yeah. stuff. All of that is super fun. And uh, that's the camera you've been making. So you made the Kickstarter, you said uh, on your email that it was 141 cameras, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah, 148. Okay, 148. Uh, how are you doing with the building? I know you've been slowly building them as a full-time job nowadays. Uh, how are you going with that? Um, we're down to about the last uh, about 20 cameras now. Mm -hmm. So it, it's taken longer than I obviously want. I appreciate everybody's patience. Um, I was really kind of blown away by the support originally. Um, I said when I chatted last night, you know, I'd originally done my, done my sums on maybe 40 cameras. Mm -hmm. as of you know it, it's a very niche market it's something new and i was you know blown away by that support it was amazing and, and it was that support that's kind of allowed me to to take chroma full time that no, the yeah. kind of community so, so yeah. yeah so they're they're pretty much you know they're they're on the on the end now the the intention was that they would all be done before the photography show this weekend but i sent an update out um no i saw i yeah to say I've been some of my, my components have been held up by the uh, the great coronavirus pandemic so mm -hmm. uh, that's unfortunately put a, a hold on some of the parts but they, they should be out um I say as soon as they arrive okay and getting into the new cameras there's two models you brought out there's been yep. uh the carbon uh chrome adventure uh yep. and then the snapshot let's start with the snapshot it's a camera I'm very interested I'm a travel wide yep. user. Uh, I even have the um, camera Dactyl OG. I have yep. the, what is it called? Malefic cameras, uh, snapshot uh, sort of camera too. Not the snapshot, yep. of course, that's yours. But like, <laughs> this is basically a concept that I really enjoyed seeing. I didn't understand it till I read the whole website. So I highly recommend people check the link below. But it's uh, like a four by five, but it has uh, little rods that they make as spacers and then you have a helical that lets you focus. So basically, I thought the spacers moved. So I thought it was like, oh, the spacers can go from a 90 millimeter to a 130. I was like, how does he do that? But then I read that the spacers have to be interchanged. You can buy yep. them and they were like 18 pounds, which is not yep. bad. Um, so the snapshot, yeah, it's like a travel wide camera, but it has bellows. You change the spacers and it, you set it at whatever. I think it's 50 millimeter less than the lens you need. 
And yeah. uh, then basically you can shoot it like a point and shoot four by five. So tell me, how did that come to, I really like the idea. I like the idea of flexibility it, without changing cones. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that was it. I mean, I, I, I think when I did the original uh, advanced camera, that I was really kind of focused on um, portability, practicality. You know, I, mm -hmm. I said kickstart, I don't get a lot of time as a photographer. You know, I've got a family, I've got a job, I've got time. So I, I've always liked the idea of something that maybe you can fit in a lunch break. I used to take it to work with me and do that. So the snapshot is an extension of that, really, in the idea that you can put it in your bag. You know, you're going to work or whatever, and you, you think, oh, I want to go out at lunchtime and go and shoot some sheet film or some roll film, whatever you want to use on it. Um, so obviously, it has to be, be portable. It has to be light. You're going to handhold mainly. There is a tripod thread on it. So, um, you know, if you do want to put it on a tripod. Only horizontal, though. I saw that yes. there's no vertical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can always move your head. I mean, I have a chunky exactly. thing here, but like basically you could just, uh, people understand that you can just move your yep. camera sideways. That's okay. it. I mean, like you said, the majority of our cameras have got a single tripod thread, haven't they? So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 it can go on a tripod if you want to. So, you know, um, but as you say, it's a, it's a fixed large format camera, but it, it's light. Um, I think the, the weight, top end is about 700 grams without the lens. So mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it, you know, it's not going to get in the way in your bag. Um, but I also didn't want to have this idea that you've got to have multiple cones if you want to use multiple lenses. Mm -hmm. The idea of a handheld 4x5 you know, isn't new. It's, it's you know, things like the Gobby Scope of yeah. 1950s, 1960s. So, but I've always loved that that kind of tactile handhold camera. So um, my early design had a printed cone, very much like, like say, like the OG and the Travel Wide and things like that. But... Um, the idea of interchangeable cones, but then you've got to carry multiple cones and you also need multiple helicoids then because it's fixed to the cone. Mm -hmm. um, it just didn't really fit in with my kind of chroma mantra of making things affordable and making them appealing to maybe someone who hasn't shot it before. So uh, that's when I came up with the, the moving bellows. So uh, like you say, the, the, the metal spacer bars literally set the, the, the start point of the helicoid for the, and the lens. So, you know, I've got a 90 mil Schneider on mine at the moment, so I've got 35 mil spacer bars in it. So then that then moves the lens to just just ahead of infinity, but then the helicoid then takes up the, the focus and it gives me a range of infinity down to about two and a half feet sort of focusing yeah, range. Which, on the which is already very complicated to compose handheld. I've used the travel wide on a tripod and it works great. Um, yeah. No, I like the idea of the, the little spacers. Uh, one thing I did notice is you, you um, include the helicoid and you can change yep. the front of the helicoid for different lenses if you want to carry a 90 and a 135, for example. One thing yep. to keep in mind being large format shooters is handheld, a 90 is doable. Something like a 150 and focusing marks is very, very uh, tricky because of depth of field, so beware. Uh, and anything longer, you're just basically just guessing really badly because <laughs> it's not going to come out and sheet film is not cheap. But um, on a tripod, it's great because you can take a really lightweight thing. And a lot of people are using and this, something maybe away from this interview, is cameras, a large format, just as a point and shoot. Kind of like I could use, uh, you know, Hasselblad, just straight focus, nothing else. So there's no movements on the snapshot, so people no. are aware. Uh, maybe if you change the, the little spacers and for, uh, fixed well, it yeah. sideways, you could do some really heavy shame flung or something like it, uh, which maybe someone will try. But um, no, yeah. I like the the price is 195 pounds. Right now, it had a little discount for the photography show uh, offer. Um, and one thing yeah. I did notice is the helicoid has a, a, a the little you know lens board to call it something, or lens adapter. How mm -hmm. how wide can you go? As in, what copals can you use? Copal one, copal zero. I'm sure they can fit, but copal three yeah. would it fit? It's not that be I would. And yeah, you've got big lenses at that point. The, the, the main limitation, if you like, with the helicoid is that obviously the rear element of the lens fits within the helicoid. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an M65 helicoid. So mm -hmm. your lens decision is, is also going to be based on the size of that rear element. So yeah. obviously, again, I refer back to my Schneider 90, which is a, I think you've used on Travel Wide, haven't you? It's a great, mm -hmm. great lens for hand holding, and the, the, there is no rear element. Basically, it's tiny. No, it's um, so tiny it goes through the hole, so... Yeah, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> but I've got a 150 here as well. You know, a, a Fuji, and that stuff fits nicely on it. The rear—that's it, it, the main—the main thing to bear in mind is that rear element size. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, anything up to kind of 65 mil diameter will be fine. Okay. Um, and same obviously for the, like say, the shutter size. Okay, okay. Uh, no, I like that. Lens, I, tell me. I was just to say, like you say, the lens boards are a metal lens boards that screw into the helicoid, so they're, they're interchangeable. So. No, no, I, I like the concept, honestly, and I like the fact that you can carry a 4x5 in a bag with, you know, different lenses. And the lens with the lens uh, board probably mm-hmm. just is basically the size of the lens, and you can put it in a little pouch and just carry multiples. So that's, that's nice. That's it, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I put a graphmatic on mine as well, so I've got, you know, six sheets loaded yeah. in, in a single holder, very, you know, all press graphmatic, and that's brilliant on it, because, again, you're not changing holders you're not doing anything like that so no it works yeah, really yeah. Well. It's, it's at the end of the day it's a portable four by five for straight up shots and yeah four by five film or roll film that uh, we, one thing we haven't talked about is the backs that you're using except uh graphmatics graph locks uh graph lock backs so medium format like, like you know all that stuff polaroid backs all of that is yeah. basically i wouldn't say 100 percent universal but i think you probably can fit everything yeah, yeah, so long as the, the, the hold that you want to use it is sort of four by five compatible, so it's international standards. So I've here I've tested on the Cypress pictures. I've got things like Fuji Quick Load, like say Graphmatic. I've got a Toyo six by nine roll film back. Um, obviously, standard double sheet holders work. The new Chromographic dry plate holder mm-hmm. works in it. Um, I've kind of made it as <laughs> as internationally standard as you can. I've certainly found over the years that standards do tend to vary a little bit across large format accessories. The yeah. standards don't always exactly match, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but it will fit pretty much everything that I've thrown at it so far. Okay. Uh, okay. It's the same back on the Adventure and the Advanced as well. So, okay. so it's, it's the same back throughout three cameras that you have yeah. in the lineup right now. And then yeah. last, we have the Chroma Adventure we've mentioned. It's carbon fiber mixed yep. with uh i don't know if there's any acrylic but mixed with some 3d parts and all that so yep. is this like a higher grade advanced camera it does have a couple things i noticed like the back will yep. be able to yep. slide forward kind of like the phillips chamonix and how cameras can do yep. um for yep. wide angle movements and stuff so tell me a little bit about it yeah um yeah so the the um the carbon adventure came from a conversation with uh, a couple of other photographers at me last year where I had the, the advanced with me. And they were saying that, you know, I love the advanced. Have you ever thought about doing a kind of a, a step up version, you know, uh, and materials, save some weight. Um, so that got me thinking again, it's, it's always dangerous giving me ideas for new, new designs. So I've been working on that for about the last sort of six to eight months with uh, a carbon fiber uh, machining company here in the UK. So that's entirely carbon fiber, printed ABS, and aluminium, the, the um, Adventure. So it's it's about 150 grams lighter than the Advanced. Um, arguably, even more rigid again. You know, the, mm-hmm. the Advanced is solid what it has, but the, the carbon doesn't go anywhere. It's got six mil thick carbon fiber, front and rear uprights. It goes nowhere. Um, and like you say, the, the, the biggest uh, movement difference is the rear standard slides forward. So the idea is if you put a, you know, an ultra wide angle lens or really wide angle 65, 75, things like that, on most 4x5s now that don't have a slide in rear back, you're going to get the focus in bed in the bottom of the shot yeah. on the whole. Um, it's a little bit of a, you know, one of those things, the, the wide field of view of the lens, but the, the beauty of, of the, the adventure is sliding the, the rear all the way forwards. You slide the front standard back to it. Uh, it ends up a couple of inches from the front of the, the base, so they're not going to get in the shot. Um, so if you want to use the really wide-angle lenses, it's it's a much better option for that. No, yeah, no, yeah basically what I saw in, in the website is that having the back being able to go forward and using back bellows with a 47, 35. Yeah. I've used the 35. It kind of vignettes well, a bit on 4x5. Yeah. Um, it's kind of crazy. Why do you actually see the cable? We saw that the cable was in focus because we shot like an F-16 and that was crazy. I had a video for it, but I never posted it. Um, but no, it's very interesting. One thing is like this camera is going to be like the nicer Chroma Advance. Let's put it that way with the carbon and added. Yeah. Are you going to go backwards with the bed for the Advance? Like, are you going to bring that sliding bottom to the Advance? I'm not planning to. Um, 
mainly because the Advanced uses a, an acrylic bed, mm -hmm. which is solid as it is, it's a very fixed bed. But I think if you try, if you start adding more movements into the base, I don't want to give up any rigidity of that. And I'm not currently looking at replacing the bed on the Advanced. Mm -hmm. um, again, the company I work for do the carbon fiber. Um, also cut, I use fiberglass uh, leaf springs and graphite cams for the, the Advanced and the snapshot. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have been looking at their sort of options on sort of thicker fiberglass for the bed, more so from my point of view, from a, a manufacturing point of view. Um, I'm always looking at ways that I can um, sort of speed up the manufacturing of cameras and, and less parts I'm putting together means I can, yeah. I can build them more quickly. Um, as it stands today, I, I am chroma camera. <laughs> so um, yeah. I've got another photographer sort of coming on board with me who's building cameras with me um, mm -hmm. this this kind of relaunch this weekend is is a push to, to grow the business. Um, so bringing someone on board means obviously I can I can build cameras more quickly for people okay, and get okay. them. Um, honestly, as questions that I have myself, I can't see much more from uh, the point of view. I would like to know um, throughout the existence of Chroma from the Kickstarter till today, well, have you had anyone you know? give you some advice or complaints that have made the camera change or what are the things people have noticed? Because of course, when you launch a new brand, yeah. making cameras, as much as you've been a maker almost your whole life, there's always things that one doesn't see or oversees or oh, you may be, may be doing yeah. some things that's very advanced and then you realize, okay, it was so simple for a reason, you know, because it's easier yeah. in the field. Anything you've seen like that throughout the building of your brand? Yeah, I've had a lot of feedback um, right up from the early design and I'm now, you know, I um, I sent you the link to the, the original build thread that I, I ran, and I'm, I'm a big fan of kind of putting my ideas out to, to the community, if you like, and before I've, I put them on cameras, uh, I've never kind of hidden any of the development or the ideas, and, you know, a lot of ideas I've had haven't come off. You know, I've put them out mm -hmm. there, and people have either gone, yeah, I love it, or they've gone, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm never going to use that. Um, and I think that you, there's definitely been things on there, and like the uprights now on both the... Uh, Venture and the Advanced are aluminium U-frames, um, which again, combination of, of assembly time. Obviously, the original cameras were acrylic uprights that were kind of bolted uprights. Mm -hmm. um, but also that, again, that little bit of extra rigidity on the uprights. I think a few people were, who were using them in quite extreme conditions um, kind of came back to me and said, you know, maybe that would be a better approach, maybe a little bit easier. We had, I had one of the early cameras um, came back to me because the, the guy who was using it, when he was folding it down, he, he got attacked by a bee. <laughs> and um, he, he panicked while he was being uh, hounded by a bee and ended up cracking one of the uprights. <laughs> so uh, that came back and he swapped it out. And that was what, what kind of prompted me to replace the uprights with printed parts rather than the original ones were laminated acrylic with a, a mm -hmm. stainless steel plate on them, um, which 99% you know, of the time when bees weren't attacking people, they were fine. But... Uh, it definitely made me think, okay, well, let's step up the, the assembly. So I then invested in a number of printers. So I've got them running 24-7 at home now, printing components for, mm -hmm. for those, the, the, the later cameras. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm always welcome feedback of people. Oh. Um, yeah, I think I'm not the an expert. Yeah, the community right now, it's like you always get one person that's tried it in a very, very extreme scenario and a movement or something. And those are usually the most, uh, I wouldn't say loud, but, you know, um, yeah, seen yeah. on the community. And sometimes those things yeah. can damage a project. And I like the idea that you have. And I think Matt from Reveni Labs had is the fact that you guys are welcoming to listening and, and seeing what can be done instead of just, you know, yeah. giving the shoulder. And not that it's done in any other brands, but it's hard to get to some people. And I like, we were talking that same thing. Like now we can talk straight to the maker and say, Hey, uh, you know, Steven, like this is happening to this and maybe the next iteration and not iteration as a Mark two, but more like yeah. the cameras from then on will go. Uh, yeah, I've one thing, done that. yeah. One thing I've seen a lot of people complain. And again, I'll air quote that is that Intrepid, for example, came out with their first iteration that was, you know, that university project that Max did. Uh, yeah. I'm a big fan of Max and, and the brand, uh, good, good friends too. But the fact like it was all plywood and it slowly has gone towards the latest version, which is the black one, which hopefully I'll be doing another in-depth uh, interview with him. 
uh, which is now no plywood is seen. Like you started with the acrylic and now we're starting to see the acrylic go away for, you know, I like the idea yeah. that evolution's coming, but I think a lot of people test, feel it like it's a test of the, of the market and then adapting, which is not bad, but people feel sometimes like guinea pigs as customers. And I understand yeah, no, their I point. Think, I, think that's, I think it is a risk. The last thing and I think certainly myself, I would ever want to do is make people feel like they, they've missed out on something. You know, they, they've supported you and then, okay, why is there a better version now? Um, and, you know, that's, I've, I've been very open with, with any changes I've made. And, and anyone who's come back to me and said, oh, you know, I've got this one and, you know, see that one's got that version now. Mm -hmm. I'm always willing to, to talk about, you know, swapping out parts and things and if, if need be any improvements. I, I want people to enjoy using the cameras. That's that's my my priority, really. I'm a photographer as well. I, I don't want yeah. people going off. <clears throat> I bought that one, I'm not going to use it because of X, you know, whatever that, that issue is. But like you say, people in the community, the large format cameras have been, you know, 150 years old. There, there, there's very there's very little new in large format cameras, um, mm -hmm. like a lot of cameras on the whole. So I think the, the choice of materials and, and the kind of the aesthetics of cameras are, are, are a big part of differentiating options. You know, mm -hmm. you've got... You know, you've got a Ghibelline with your titanium cameras. You've got the other end of wooden cameras, acrylic, carbon. You know, we've got a whole massive range now, which is brilliant. Yeah. Um, and as, as a C-Max uh, has, has got a black Intrepid now. So I might have to make a plywood chroma. I like, yeah, you got to go the other way around. Uh, one thing I, I, I want to ask, and I don't want to forget, is what's the policy on parts or broken things? Like, I remember, like, well, that's one of those things that a lot of people that are getting into large format go to the old cameras and a lot of people are like, yeah, well, you might buy a beat up Graflex that still works yeah. because they work wonders. But if something yeah. does break, there's not so much as spare sometimes. Or they like the idea of these uh, entry level cameras. And I'm saying entry level because the price is cheap. I'm not saying that yeah. they're not capable of doing everything. Um, but the fact is that the brands are up and running and you can get spares. So what's the policy with if someone breaks something uh, on their fault, let's say? Uh, because I would understand if it, it's a fault of the camera for some reason, then it would be replaced. Yeah. But what's the policy with that? Um, well, again, I'm very open to help people out. The last thing I want is some sort of camera there that can't be used. You know, mm -hmm. um, I manufacture all the parts. I can supply all the parts. So um, I've had people come back to me. Uh, I've got a couple in the workshop at the moment uh, having parts replaced on them through, you know, user issues or maybe they didn't know how to use it first. So... I'm always more than happy to swap that out. The the camera itself is made in three main components. So you've essentially got the bed, the front standard, and the rear standard. Mm -hmm. So they, they're all interchangeable, as in they can be swapped out quite easily on all the cameras. Yeah. So it, it's not an issue for me to, to do things like that. And just say, I, I want people to be happy using them. That's, okay, okay. That's fine. Okay, well, uh, Stephen, I don't know. Is there anything else you would like to add to this sort of interview or review of what you're coming out with? Um, just to say thank you, really, to everybody. And, and yourself and everyone who's helped me out massively. I'm a, I'm a tiny company. You know, it, mm -hmm. it is literally me. So um, the, the, the support I can get from, from yourselves and all the people in the community is amazing. I, I, that was why we were talking about me. I was really gutted about the photography show being cancelled. Yeah. Right time, right decision. But you know, I was really looking forward to getting together. The analog community is brilliant. It's such a friendly, welcoming kind of space, and um, mm -hmm. it's just nice to get together. So we're definitely going to do it again in September. Um, no, yeah. So yeah, so no, I, I wouldn't be here without everybody kind of sharing my my posts, sharing my links, putting photos up. I love it when people tag me in pictures um, that they've taken on their Chroma. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I was intending to do for the photography show is I was taking all the pictures that I've been tagged in on Instagram. And I was actually making a set of printed bellows with all those images on the bellows <laughs> to have at the show. So I'll, I'll do that for September. I'll uh, I've started doing printed bellows now. So I've got, I've got the, uh, I've got a tartan, a tartan chroma sitting here, tartan the chroma. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a carbon. There you go. So um, I'll definitely be doing that for September. So again, I love, sharing everybody's work and, and being tagged in it. I think that's great. So no, yeah. yeah, one yeah, thing just, that, that I've noticed is I went to Photokina 2016. I went to 18. I hope I can go or we can all go to 2020 if it happens. But is the fact that the community is now being made or, you know, it's it's englobing like people that are passionate about it. It's not so much a corporate job 
like maybe it would have been 15 years ago. It's more these people that are putting more effort than, uh, than money they're making because I have the same issue. I'm a one man team. I'm on YouTube. I'm doing film photography reviews and videos and news. I, it, there's support is great, but at the same time you got to pay bills. So it's not the most, yeah. you know, sensitive thing to, or smart thing to do, but at the same time, we're all <laughs> passionate and that's why I love it. So yeah, I yeah. think, um, we'll hopefully see each other on September in the UK. I changed my flights already to September. Hopefully oh, th they'll be, you know, able to do it. And, yeah. uh, yeah. Thanks Steven for having this time with me. And, uh, if anyone has any questions or anything, I'll leave the links to Steven's, uh, website to his Instagram Kickstarter the, for the original Chroma camera and they can reach out to you, I'm sure, or comments below and we'll be able to help people hopefully. So yeah, thanks for having your t uh, the time on t today, Stephen, and good luck with the new cameras and the announcement, the soft release. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cheers for that, thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks guys for watching and as always, uh, you can leave a comment below or anything you want. I'll see you in the next one.